Okay, so two years ago, uh, for the first time in my life, I was going to go to see the finish of the Iditarod sled dog race in Nome, Alaska. I'd never been to Nome, I'd never seen any part of the Iditarod, and I was so excited. As I was sitting in the Anchorage airport, uh, waiting to board my flight to Nome, I got a text message from my friends up there, and they said that they had arranged for me to go on a dog sled ride the next morning. I thought that sounded fantastic. What better place to go on a dog sled ride than Nome? So the next morning I wake up in Nome and I'm told that I need to be at the dog lot by 9 a.m. So I show up and I am so ready. I've got on my full length down parka. I have on my bunny boots. I've got on a big fur hat and I've got a couple thousand dollars worth of camera equipment hanging around my neck because I think I'm going to be taking some pictures. There's eight dogs and they're already harnessed and they're attached to the sled. Now, mind you, this sled is not quite as elaborate as the sleds you might see on 4th Avenue during the ceremonial start of the Iditarod. Instead, uh, this is a very rudimentary device. It was essentially a piece of plywood that would be my seat, uh, on top of some runners, nothing for me to hold on to, but a handlebar in the back. So the musher says, are you ready? I said, I'm ready. She's like, hop in the sled. So I hop in and I sit down on that piece of plywood, my legs are out in front of me, and boom, we take off like a rocket. These eight dogs are moving, and eight dogs can move really fast, and these dogs are flying, and we're barreling along the tundra, I'm trying not to get dumped out of the sled. I'm holding on to my camera equipment and wondering why on earth I brought it with me at this point. And, oh, several minutes or so after we'd left the dog lot, and at least three quarters of a mile or so down the trail, I decide to make some conversation with my musher because we hadn't really had a chance to chat before we took off. So as I'm still sitting there and looking forward at the dogs, I say uh, out loud, so how old are most of these dogs? I didn't get a response, so I just asked again out loud, so, how old are most of these dogs? Silence. There was no response at all. And at that moment, my heart sunk, and I slowly turned around, and I saw that there was nobody on the back of my sled. There was no musher on the back of my sled. And at this point, there was no human being for as far as the eye could see. And the town of Nome was quickly fading into the distance. So I take a minute to digest my situation that <clears throat> here I am uh, flying across the tundra with uh, a place I've never been, eight dogs I've never met. And I do, I think, what any reasonable person would do. I decide I'll just start shouting out at the dogs. Certainly that will remedy this situation. So I start shouting, hey, hey dogs, hey. And as you can imagine, that was completely ridiculous and it did nothing. So the second thing I did is I went into the memory bank, my memory bank, of every dog mushing command I'd ever heard in my life. And I grew up in Alaska, but I, um, I know nothing about dog mushing, but I've certainly heard dog mushing commands, or what I think are commands. So I think this is a really good idea. I'll just start shouting those commands, or what I think are commands. So I say, he, ye, ga, ha, which again was uh, pretty, pretty ridiculous. But I will tell you that the two dogs in the back, the ones closest to me, they did turn around. And they turned around with this look on their faces as their tongues are hanging out, their tails are wagging, and they're sprinting across the snow. And the look on their face was like, uh, hey, crazy lady in the back, uh, we hear you, and we don't know what you're saying, and we actually don't care, because if you haven't noticed, uh, the eight of us up here, we're having a really great time. And we're just gonna keep right on running. So I'm like, okay, I guess I can hop out of the sled, but let's be honest, what is that going to accomplish? Uh, we, I could get hurt, and also then we have a really rogue dog team running around Nome, and I'm then laying out on the tundra. 
But at about this point, I heard a large metal object clanking along the side of the sled. And I pick it up, and it's the claw break. At least that's what I thought it was and what I think it is. And I thought, oh, I know. I can throw this down on the snow, and I'll stop these dogs. Yeah, that, that's what I'll do. Fortunately, my voice of reason quickly quickly came into my head, and I thought that is absolutely a terrible idea. All evidence up to this point is that I really don't know what I'm doing, and <laughs> the chance of me actually uh, being able to use this object for what it was designed is slim to none. <laughs> so as I'm holding this metal claw, and I'm looking up at the dogs, two things became crystal clear. One is that these dogs were having the time of their lives. And honestly, I was having a really good time too. It was a beautiful day. And the second thing is, these dogs knew far more about where they were going and what they were doing than I ever would. And I needed to trust them. So I took that metal, that claw break, and I attached it behind me on the handlebar where the musher was supposed to be. I made sure that was secure. I turned back around and I said, okay dogs, let's go for a ride until someone finds us. And that's what we did. We went on an adventure. I don't even know where we were. I was, but we were flying around. They never slowed down, by the way. And we did this for about a half an hour. It was a while until the other musher, she showed up with another dog team, actually. And somehow they were able to, and she had another musher with her too, and they were able to stop, you know, my little dog team. And, our little adventure was over, and they took us back to town. But I found out, that's when I found out actually what had caused this adventure, uh, was that right before I had arrived at the dog lot, uh, the musher had fed the dogs some fish snacks, so there was some fish oil on her hands, and she had pulled that claw break probably a little too soon, and as soon as those dogs felt that release, they took off, and when she went to grab the handlebar, her hand slipped right off because of the fish oil. But I'm gonna tell you something. The, that camera equipment that I brought with me, it actually was pretty useful. Uh, when I got home, I took a look at my, uh, the pictures that I'd taken, and I realized at that time that I, for the first time, that I'd actually taken some pictures uh, before I'd realized I was on my solo mission. <laughs> and one of the pictures was perfect. And no, it wasn't a selfie. It was me, or it was taken, I took it from sitting in the sled, looking ahead at the snowy hills of Nome and my new eight best friends, and it was a sunny day, and so that sun cast a shadow, and that shadow told the story. <laughs> in that shadow, you can see my little head sitting on the sled, and you can see the handlebar where the musher is supposed to be, but it is clear that there is nobody there. <laughs>